really wanted to talk about the entry points of the graph, specifically queries and mutations, and how we kind of approach designing these in a way that's going to be able to uh, really allow us to get the utility out of the graph that we're looking for. Client developers, they should be kind of proposing what is being exposed, and that's kind of the initial starting point. So client developers get to describe, like, hey, if you just had, you know, uh, if you could just execute this query and get the data you need, what would that look like, and would this solve your use case? First thing you'll notice, you know, we've added a, a little bit more descriptive name. So I put this in here. This wasn't precisely what you know, the client developer you know, proposed, but being a, a schema author, we can kind of see some uh, you know, potential uh, future use cases here, and we want to add a more descriptive query name to help with uh, documenting you know, what this functionality actually is. The other thing, we're actually minimizing kind of the exposed functionality here. Um, in our initial use case, we weren't quite sure you know, which fields or which uh, you know, username or email if we were going to need to use those specifically to uh, look up a user. And based off of what clients are telling us, they don't need that, so we don't need to add it to our graph. Um, we've also been able to uh, add, just because we have a single requirement, it wouldn't make sense to you know, not pass an ID calling user by ID, so we can make this parameter required. Um, and this leaves just one way to call this. So before we were exposing you know, nine different ways um, and nine different, um, you know, uh, different permutations that we would have to handle. Uh, but with this, with this design, there's just one. Lastly here, there's going to be less overall data exposed. Because we know the actual use case and what fields are, you know, our clients actually want to select, this is the only thing we need to add. This can help specifically with schema evolution and, and maintaining an evolvable graph over time. If we were to add the exact same functionality here, you know, we would end up having you know, multiple queries in this case. We'd have, you know, if we want to expose functionality of looking up a user by email, we'd have to add another query. Although we've added like, an additional query, there's only two permutations on ways to call this. Because these are required input parameters, this can help reduce the overhead to clients here. And in the general case where we're trying to you know, uh, take both of these pieces of functionality, you know, we've got four permutations we've got to handle. So our, our contract with our clients and the contract that we're putting in our API um, is exposing these different ways to call this. And we didn't really intend to do that with this design. We really only intended to add two valid use cases and two valid ways to call our graph. A really helpful way to frame this is, is to think of queries and mutations more like functions than endpoints. Overall, this is less overhead for clients because of this difference in, in ways to call it. And because we've added more specific naming, it's, it's more well documented as well. Uh, the, the use case is, is much more clear. The other benefit we get here is you know, we get to leverage the actual type system um, for, for you know, addressing errors uh, at run, or not at runtime, but you know, at, uh, you know, before it actually, the resolver functions are actually invoked. So I want to talk a bit about mutations here. Um, a lot of this applies uh, across the same you know, for queries and mutations. But one, one helpful pattern is um, having a, you know, a single input, even if you've got multiple fields that you need to add. And in this case, you know, we're creating a user. Um, we've got a create user mutation. Um, and we've got a single required input, but we've got you know, f four fields here. If we can require all these, we're still only adding a single way to call this mutation. Kind of looking at a different flavor of mutation, um, kind of like updates, the advice is to add some finer grain mutations, uh, specifically when you're updating, like using you know, update mutations here. So for example here, you know, update user email. It's much more explicit. Um, our inputs are, are smaller, and we can require everything. Another helpful tip here is to take advantage of custom scalers. So in this example, we've added a, an email scaler. Um, this can help kind of narrow the type system to make it more clear what's happening in our API and, and really signal the functionality to consumers of, of how to use this and, and really what it is. Another really helpful tip is to take advantage of enums uh, for the same reason, to help kind of narrow your types and really define that use case and make it very clear for consumers. I've kind of painted general queries and mutations in a bad light. Um, I, I don't mean to because there, there are you know, valid use cases for this. It's just a lot of times you know, the, there's unintended consequences when we do it. Uh, but when you do need to generalize, there are some tips. Um, so if you're going to generalize a query like this, um, it's a really good idea to have to take advantage of default parameters. Um, you kind of get the benefits of, of having required because you can rely on a value, but, and you can also document like, what the default behavior is, uh, but allow clients to override that. Um, another tip is to avoid overly generic names. Um, so in this case, I've called this all users. You know, it's still pretty generic, but it's a little better than just users. We've kind of reserved some name spacing and, and made a little clear what, what we're trying to do here. So 
for input parameters, like, like we've been talking about, we want to require them as much as possible, and we want to minimize the nullable inputs that we have. It's the opposite, though, for output types. We actually want to maximize nullable, uh, nullable fields. And this, this will go in um, a, bit, uh, a bit in conflict with client developers. Clients typically want things required. But um, if we keep these nullable, this gives uh, schema authors and schema producers the most flexibility here uh, to kind of move forward. So that's my talk. Thank you.